Hey everybody, welcome back to the Light Side Reaction Reviews. Today we are going back to our roots. Uh, if you're a long time viewer, you know that my first video, I think it was my first video, if not the first, one of the first, uh, was me reacting to um, a, a video by Star Wars Theory. And of course, me being a Star Wars fan, that's how I started this channel, was reacting to uh, uh, you know official trailers, um, anything that would come out officially from Disney as they were releasing the Star Wars material, and then also fan material. And uh, Star Wars Theory, for those of you that aren't aware, um, he is one of the predominant um, voices online, uh, particularly on YouTube, when it comes to Star Wars fan materials. Um, he went on to uh, create his own big-budget fan film, uh, which was called Darth Vader Shards of the Past, I think. And uh, that was the very first thing that I reacted to on this channel, I believe. And if you go back to my old videos, uh, in fact, go to my uh, reaction reviews playlist and scroll down to the very first playlist, uh, first video on that playlist. And that's that, I'm 99% sure that's what that video is. But anyway, um, Star Wars Theory, after all these years of putting out that amazing video... Um, he's been working on episode two uh, all this time, and I'm still waiting, you know, for that to come out. Fantastic. I'm just so excited to see it come out. But while he's working on it, it's a big budget, so it takes time and energy and money uh, in order to do it. And uh, he did it all, you know, uh, grassroots, you know, with no major funding and did it all on his own. And it was just phenomenal the way he did it. Um, true to Star Wars. And if you watch any of his videos, you know that he is a true Star Wars fan, and, um, you know, he's an expert, <laughs> pretty much, when it comes on to what is true and not true about Star Wars. Anyway, he's been putting out a lot of other material um, that isn't as big as the Vader fan film, and um, right now he just came out with uh, Dark Empire comic movie fan film part one. And uh, just released two days ago as of the time I'm watching this right now. And it's on YouTube and there's uh, going to be a link in the description where you can go over and actually watch it. But uh, I want to go ahead and check this out. And going back to our roots today, uh, reacting to old uh, to uh, fan film stuff just like we did in the old days. But anyway, uh, here's this description. Um, we hope you enjoy this comic book movie of Dark Empire in a somewhat realistic way. And for those of you that aren't familiar, uh, Dark Empire is part of Star Wars Legends. Uh, it was redacted when Disney bought it out, and uh, it basically tells the story of what happens with Luke Skywalker after the events of Return of the Jedi, about how he starts the new, um, basically the New Republic. And so... Um, uh, it's all legends now. I mean, it still exists in the books and the comics and stuff like that. You can read the stories. Uh, but he's doing an official comic book adaptation. Well, not official. He's doing a comic book movie adaptation of it as a fan film. And he's doing it in several different parts, apparently. And this is part one. And it is uh, just over seven minutes long. And he says, uh, we hope you enjoy. Um, by the way, it's a fantastic story. Um, in fact, my uh, brother-in-law... Uh, named his daughter Mara after one of the main characters in the the Dark Empire storyline. But anyway, um, it says, We hope you enjoy this comic book movie of Dark Empire in a somewhat realistic way. So somewhat realistic. Uh, I imagine he's going to be doing CGI and sort of animated characters, but in a, a semi-realistic sort of uh, animation style says, we have already begun on part two, which starts with Luke's story, just like the official comic book. We created this using Blender, Photoshop, and a few other programs. For the voices, we recorded lines and then altered the pitch with AI to create something similar. So he's actually using artificial intelligence, uh, programming, and software in order to augment and make it more um, realistic and uh, to fit the actual uh, lore and so when you hear voices, it might sound very similar to the actual character's voices. So that's kind of cool. I like that idea. We hope it keeps you in the immersion of the EU Star Wars story and EU as Extended Universe. Uh, this is a fan project and is not monetized. 
uh, copyrighted for official Star Wars music. And so uh, he's got, you know, their own music. He probably hired somebody to create it and stuff in order to avoid copyright issues. And, uh, you know, we know with making fan films, you have to be careful about that. And uh, so he's trying to avoid copyright and yet remaining faithful and true to the original George Lucas version of what he intended Star Wars to be. And in this case, not George Lucas, but uh, was it Timothy Zahn, I think, that wrote the Dark Empire books? I think it is. But anyway, basically, he's uh, trying to be true to not only George Lucas, but in this case, to I think it's Timothy Zahn, the um, Dark Empire stories. And uh, I do like reading the Star Wars novels, and I've been watching for the Dark Empire book to come out in a hardback cover uh, cop, uh, version. Uh, and if anybody knows of where I can find one, as far as I've been able to find so far, it's just I've just been able to find copies of the original um, uh, pa trade paperback, uh, or the original paperback versions. And uh, I would love to find a hard copy version, a hardcover version that has all three volumes in one. So if anybody knows if those exist, uh, comment down below and let me know. Because as a collector and a Star Wars fan, that's something I would love to get my hands on a copy of that. But anyway, let's go ahead and check this out. This is Star Wars Theories' new Dark Empire comic, comic movie fan film, part one. And here we go. All right, that's his official opening. And Theory Sabers. There's, a, there's the ad for Theory Sabers. By the way, um, one of the other things he does is he creates his own lightsabers. And so if you're interested in Star Wars memorabilia or, uh, you know, just uh, that sort of thing, check it out. Uh, might, might be a little bit pricey uh, for a lot of fans, but uh, if you've got a little bit of money to throw around and this is something that inter interests you, check it out. TheorySabers.com Okay, non-profit project made by fans for fans. And see, here we go. Long time ago in a galaxy far, far away, he's staying true to the, the format of the original. Okay, so there's the Star Wars theme. And I'm muting the music for copyright purposes. Okay, Dark Empire. Okay, this is exciting. I'm excited for this already. The galaxy is in turmoil. Following the deaths of Darth Vader and the Emperor, the New Republic struggles to maintain control. Imperial warlords, led by Grand Admiral Thrawn, nearly crushed the fledgling government. And this is the introduction of Thrawn, originally. Though Thrawn was defeated, the Empire is far from broken. Factions fighting for power have led to a civil war among the Empire, Imperial Remnant. In a daring raid over the abandoned, junk-ridden world of Coruscant, Luke Skywalker and Lando, Lando Calrissian have crash-landed aboard the Alliance Star Destroyer Liberator. Now, as Princess Leia Organa, Han Solo, and Chewbacca embark on a mission to rescue their comrades, the fate of the New Republic hangs in the balance. The shadows of the old empire loom large, threatening to engulf the galaxy once more. Okay, that's a little bit wordy uh, for a Star Wars introductory crawl, but uh, um, I like the way that he's actually presenting it. Uh, being true to the original format. And so, uh, can we turn up the volume yet? Okay, Star Wars Dark Empire, The Imperial City. Okay, so The Imperial City would be this episode title, I imagine. Authentic sound effects. Ooh, they got subtitles. Ooh, interesting uh, choice with the subtitles fading away. There's the Falcon. Okay, you can tell. Now that'll be battle debris, Land. The whole entire nice. sector's littered with it. Looks, Looks like, like paintings. Like stars already arrived, but their signal's gone off wide. You better call it in. This is the Millennium Falcon. Antari Six, do you copy? Okay, that Antari sounds kind of like their voices. Antari Six here. Yeah. Rebel stars got radio silent. This happened as soon as they came out of light speed. We're coming up on spatial distortions ahead. Stay okay, it's like sharp. a series of Those paintings. Very realistic. Long. I like this. We believe it's orbital wreckage surrounding the planet. Chewie, get ready to cut in the satellite engines. <laughs> and your repulsor lift. Here at exit hyperspace. Pardon me, sir, but the odds of collision with that amount of space debris is 3,720 to 1. 
We'll have any cross wire free pure when we get back to base. <laughs> Mr. Breathwood's bigger than I thought. Shields up. Okay, the voices aren't perfect, but they're they're close enough that you recognize who they're supposed to be. In fact, 3PO's voice almost sounds like something out of Clone Wars. Like maybe D. Bradley Baker doing the voice. Okay, nice. It's, it's actually animating the, the ships and the scenery, but not the characters themselves. Okay, so she feels it just like before. Han, Luke and Lando could be in serious danger. Yeah, I know. This is Solo to Antari 6. Establish a docking orbit. Prepare to bring on survivors. Good luck finding General Skywalker and Carizian. May the Force be with you. I feel like they should have capitalized the F in Force there. TIE Fighters. YT Modern Freighter. This is an Imperial War Zone. Leave immediately. I'm surprised they came to say hello. All right. Let's track them. There's nothing left out here. I think I got something. I wonder if he used AI to create the paintings. We've got a whole platoon of mutinous Imperial troops marching in at 060. We're taking heavy fire. Copy that, Unit 6. Stay on target. We got a squad in a tight I think Munist was too, too used in you. All right, Ants, in order to track down the rebel intruders, so keep your scanners focused on the ruins where that Star Destroyer crashed. We're never going to find those rebels in all this wreckage. Go, go! Execute these traitors. Uh, Oh, stormtroopers. Why were the stormtroopers Watch out, Wicket. traitors? I didn't get that. No. Wicket's back. Wicket the nice Ewok. Shot, Lando. Thanks, Wedge. But I don't think our field weapons are doing much good against those huge Imperial walkers. So far, I've counted 16 wounded. Most of our blasters need time to re-energize. <laughs> Looks like that walk has been hijacked by pirates. Okay, it's cool to see the walker. It's the Millennium Falcon. Haven't seen one of those since Empire Strikes Back. Did you miss me? Han Solo, you old space pirate. What are you doing here? Saving your bottle, Ando. Again. You ready, Lair? Ready. That walker's on its last legs. I've only ever had to use the same twice before. Luke is right. I can feel the force guiding my hands. Okay, so she's starting to use her force abilities. Nice, I like how it lit up from the inside, the walker. Nice little effect there. Alright, to be continued. Okay, let's check out these credits before we do our... Based on Dark Empire, that was 1991 that came out. Okay. Very cool. Let me pause this real quick. All right. I enjoyed that quite a bit. Um, didn't really get too deep into the story yet. Uh, it's almost like a teaser sort of thing. You know, only a few minutes. And so, um, you know, for future installments are going to get a lot deeper into it. Story-wise, I'm looking forward to seeing, uh, you know, what they do with uh, Grand Admiral Thrawn. Uh, you know, he's a major character in this. As I said in the original books, this was where they introduced him as a character for the first time. Since then, uh, when Disney take over, they've kind of retconned a lot of that. And, uh, 
uh, use the character in uh, Rebels and uh, some of the other stuff. Uh, you've got several books that came out, a new Thr Thrawn trilogy that uh, Timothy Vaughn or Timothy Zahn wrote. And I think there's two trilogies that came out with now. I've got all three books in the first trilogy, uh, which was the second series that he came out. Not this original one, Dark Empire, but the first Thrawn, Thrawn trilogy that they came out since Disney took over. I'm pretty sure I've got all three of those books in hardcover. And I've got, I think, one, maybe two of the books in the second Thrawn trilogy. Uh, but I don't. I know I don't have all three of those yet. Um, in fact, I was... Uh, um, there were, he was at a, Timothy Zahn was at a comic book convention several years ago and I was planning to go to that and, uh, buy one of the books there and get him to autograph it. Um, and something ended up coming up. I can't remember what, but something happened and I couldn't end up, I ended up not being able to go. But anyway, um, I love the book, love the story. Um, I love the characters and, uh, Mara Jade Disney completely retconned her, um, which is a shame because she's an awesome character, like I said, uh, influenced my brother-in-law to name his daughter after her. Uh, but anyway, um, and Mara Jade, spoiler alert, uh, ends up having a relationship with Luke Skywalker that goes into significantly into the future of Star Wars. And I won't go into too much specific details for the, those of you that want to watch this series and be surprised at how things happen, even though this, uh, you know, story is you know, almost 40 years old now, uh, or th 30, 30 or 40 years since 1991. But anyway, um, this is a good start. Um, you know, it's not animated exactly. You know, as I said, the characters aren't moving their faces or moving their mouths and stuff. It's a partially animated sort of thing. Um, I would like to see something that's fully animated, uh, but something like that is just going to be take a fortune to produce. And so what he's doing is using the technology that is available at his hands um, with artificial intelligence to uh, basically focus on the voices. It's what he's doing. He's uh, having paintings, uh, probably AI-generated paintings, uh, which look like the characters, exactly like the characters. And so that's kind of cool. Um, and then focusing on making sure the voices sound uh, as close to the original character voices as he can. And uh, so you're actually getting immersed into the story. Like I said, uh, with this opening chapter, uh, it's just a teaser. You haven't really got into a lot of details yet. Um, I'm not sure how I feel about seeing Wicket, the Ewok, in, in this. Um, I uh, kind of like to imagine the, the, the Ewoks being sort of characters that don't leave the planet of Endor or the moon of Endor, um, that they're sort of... Uh, you know, it just feels out of place to see them on a different planet in a different setting. But anyway, you know, that's the way the story goes. So, um, you know, kudos to him for following how it actually goes. But anyway, um, yeah, I'm excited to see this uh, continue and see how he adapts this. Um, especially getting to see some of these characters again. And, of course, it won't be canon. Um, it will be Star Wars Legends. Um... And uh, for those of you that aren't familiar, it also goes into uh, what happens with Han and Leia and uh, leading into the era that we've come to know as uh, the sequel trilogy. Uh, but it's a completely different storyline, completely different characters. Uh, the characters that exist in the Disney sequel trilogy don't exist in the Legends Star Wars uh, that Timothy Zahn created with these characters and these stories, Dark Empire being uh, a major one. But anyway, um, yeah, like I said, I wish that he had the technology and the funds at his disposal to um, even, you know, it would be a dream to see something live action like he did with the uh, Vader, uh, Shards of um, sh uh, Shards of the Past. Boy, it's been so long, I'm even forgetting the title of that. I think it was Vader, Shards of the Past, part one. Uh, but the way he did that, I would love to see him do a treatment like that on this. But again, it would cost a fortune. And I know he doesn't have that kind of money to do that with a grassroots level. Even fundraising is, uh, he found out, very difficult um, legally uh, because it was being a fan film and using 
uh, an, an official IP that's owned by a big company like Disney and Lucasfilm. So anyway, for what he has to work with, uh, I am pleased with how this turned out. It is, uh, um, you know, again, for what it is, it's very impressive. Um, but uh, if you really want to see something impressive, I mean, check this out, of course. Uh, I am definitely going to check this out. But I'm still waiting for uh, Shards of the Past Part 2 uh, with Darth Vader versus what Mace Windu with live-action characters. And Part 2, by the way, isn't going to be completely live-action. It's going to be a lot of gen CGI-generated characters, which is a disappointment because Part 1 being live-action was just so spectacular. But, uh, you know, fundraising being the way it is, uh, you can't. You can't hit gold twice the way you did. And he struck gold with part one. And uh, part two, if it's not gold, at least it will be silver. And uh, um, I'm looking forward to seeing that when it comes out. But anyway, uh, what do you guys think? Uh, check that out. And as always, look in the link in the description. that We'll go over to Star Wars Theories video. And go ahead and watch it unedited uh, for yourself. And that way you can get the full experience the way he intended it to be seen. And give him some support. He is a true Star Wars fan. Uh, putting out material for those of us that truly love Star Wars. And so, uh, comment down below what you think of it. And uh, thanks for watching. We'll see you next time. <laughs> Bye, everybody.